Today, we're going to be breaking down the ancient Babylonians tactics on how to build wealth for you to translate into your everyday life so you can become wealthy as well. So this book was so good that I had to get two copies. Shout out John and Rita. So to get started, first we have to explain the book. This book was written in a form of parables, which is basically stories told in forms of stories. It's not written in a textbook format where it states facts, but you have to really dig into the metaphors in which the author is telling you for you to understand the lessons behind the words. Think of it kind of like the Bible. The story starts out with peasants who are not happy with their financial status in life, so they go out and seek advice from a wise friend that they used to know back in the day named Archid. Arkid happens to be the richest man in Babylon. From Arkid's perspective, it branches off into multiple different people and shows their triumphs and how they overcame difficulties, obstacles for them to become wealthy as well. So these men tell their stories by going to three main categories. One is the rules of money. Two is the cure for an empty pocket. And three, which is the most important, is the laws of keeping your gold. So there are two main rules in this book that they hit off right away. So rule number one is to ask advice of people who you see as successful and you want to grow up and be like for advice and wisdom. Rule number two is to bring people up with you as you succeed in life. This is a very humble and selfless rule because it practices good karma and teaches you to be a non-selfish person. Does this mean you help every single person in life? No, not at all. This simply means you help the people with the experience that you've accumulated for the people who come to you and ask you for advice. Now, what if you ask the question, what happens if a thousand people come to me and ask me for advice? Well, give it to them. Never have that mindset where they're gonna take that slice of the pie from me. Because in actuality, when you make a good investment of your time helping someone else, that good karma will come back to you eventually and that person could persevere and bring you up with them as well in their career path, in their decisions in life, in networking, whatever it may be. Helping someone not only is the right thing to do, but it's also good all around that can come back to you. So there are seven cures to how to cure an empty pocket. Cure number one is every single time that you get paid, that paycheck hits, the direct deposit hits, you take a percentage, you decide what that percentage is, 10%, 20%, and you put it to the side to save, and you don't touch that. You will adjust the way you live with the money remaining over after you paid yourself and saved that money. So first your job pays you, then you pay yourself by putting that money aside, saving it, and then you will adjust your everyday lifestyle with the money you have left over. The money then that you saved will be your funds for making the right investments. Cure to empty pocket number two is to make sure you're spending your money on the right things. Budgeting. For this, I highly advise you looking up the 50-30-20 rule. Cure number three is make your money multiply. Like how the famous Assyrian entrepreneur Patrick Bedavid always says, money is a doubles game. All you have to do is figure out how to double the cash that you have enough times for you to reach your goal. Number four, guard your money. You are the guardian of your gold. That means that if money enters or leaves your hands, it is purely your responsibility and on you whatever happens with that money. You hold yourself accountable no matter what happens. Meaning if you took advice from a friend in making a bad investment and you lose that money, you do not blame that friend because you as the guardian allowed that money to pass through the gates and into something else, you weren't the one guarding it well enough. Do not blame others for what happens with your money. There's a very powerful quote in the book. You would not consult a brick maker about the value of jewels. So consult people who have wisdom and knowledge in certain industries and fields and not your buddy who says, yo, I made this much money in this investment, you need to get on it. Do your research. Cure number five is own your house. A mortgage is a liability. Your home is not an asset until it is paid off or has enough equity where it outweighs the remaining balance on the loan. Or another case would be where you have a tenant paying your mortgage and also generating a form of cash flow in which you have enough money going into your pocket after they've paid your rent. That is the only time a house is an asset. Anytime else, it is purely a liability. Own your home, pay off your mortgage as soon as you can, and then you will reap the rewards of having extra cash per month, thousands of dollars potentially. Cure number six is have money in your old age. Start investing now 
into 401ks, Roth IRAs, start a mutual fund with a financial advising company such as Edward Jones. Shout out my financial advisor, George Joseph. Because when you start investing in these types of funds at an early age, by the time that you're 60, 65, whatever age it may be in the future where you can take that money out without any fees or penalties, that is potentials of millions of dollars that you will be having for your family and yourself well into retirement, plus whatever you've earned along the way. Make the smart choices now and sacrifice now and investing in the right things. So the last cure, number seven, is to constantly study to become wiser. We live in a generation where there is a plethora of different resources, different content, different videos, lectures, blogs, mentors, people, advice that you can get from so many different resources about how to become wiser and smarter so you could be making the proper investments with your time and money. Money will work for you as long as you know how it can do that. When I first started investing, I had no idea what that meant. I had the mindset where I have to work in order for me to get a paycheck. That's very true until you learn what investing really means. You're making your money work for you. Once I started surrounding myself with the right mentors, reading the right books and making the right moves and constantly feeding myself the content from different entrepreneurs such as Patrick B. David, you truly learn there is so much more to life than being an employee. Now let's talk about the five laws of gold. Law number one is that money will come in quantities to those that know how to save their money. Does that mean you keep saving it in stockpile until it's a giant pile of cash in your room and that's what I mean by that? Absolutely not. If you know how to save your money and invest it, that money will come back to you in bigger quantities than it initially was in the beginning. Invest in something that's worthwhile. Law number two is money will work for you as long as you let it. If you're a wise investor, do your 50 to 60 hours of research before investing in your first product. Know what you're doing. Law number three, gold will cling to those who know what they're doing. Money will cling to those who take the caution and advice of wise men. Find mentors, teachers, professionals, build your team, become the product of your environment, and build a circle of people who understand this. If you don't get it, reach out to someone who might and they can teach you. Law number four, money will slip away from you if you invest in things you don't understand. This is Warren Buffett 101. If you know anything about Warren Buffett, this is his number one advice that he always gives. Invest in things that you understand. Meaning, if you see people investing in Pokemon cards and all you wanna do is make fun of them, don't invest in it because you don't understand the market. You don't, you don't understand that that guy who invested $500 in a card a year ago just really quadrupled his money today. Don't invest in things you don't understand, especially if you're going to make fun of it. Go into a, an industry, a niche where you understand it and you know how the product will be in a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, whatever that timeline may be. Go into things that you understand. And the last law of gold, law number five, is that money will only grow in legitimate investments meaning gambling with your money, scamming people, and buying materialistic things will only get you so far in life before your luck eventually runs out. You will lose it all if you don't invest in things that are legitimate. So going back to the storyline of this book, our kid goes into a debate room where anyone in the world is welcomed, rich, poor, working class, whatever it may be. And a man brings up a debate about luck. One of the questions was, does a man create his own luck? And then the men started to debate and one of my favorite quotes of the book came from this scene. To attract good luck to ourselves, it is necessary to take advantage of opportunities. Now let's examine this. You think of all these millionaires, billionaires, and you're like, man, they got so lucky. Did they get lucky? Or did they simply create their own luck because they took advantage of the opportunities before them? Don't play the victim here. Hold yourself accountable with your money. How many times have there been opportunities for you to get smarter, read, learn the advantages and loopholes around how to make more money with the money you already have, but you chose to go and party that night. You chose to go have fun that night. You chose to not invest your time wisely, your money wisely. Don't blame other people because you didn't take the opportunity. And how many times have opportunities come your path, but you chose to blink another eye because you saw how much hard work was in the way where you didn't see the potential that it could have yielded years down the road. 
that's on you for not taking the opportunity because you didn't create your own luck in that instance. So I just went over the basics of this book, truly too much great content for me to go over in just a short video. But my challenge to you is to really get your hands on one of these copies of this book and do a deep dive, understand the metaphors in this book, take the lessons in it and translate it into your everyday life because it's the difference between living the life that you want and wish for versus living the reality that you could have. So like always, if you enjoyed this content, please leave a like down below and also comment a book that you think that I should do a summary of and give life advice on. I will gladly do so. Please share this with family and friends. And like always, I'll see you next week for the next video. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Bye.